so these are all my really experimental varieties, guys. These are the varieties that we, we just sort of acquired. We're getting to know them. We're getting to understand what they're about. And um, we're trying to get them established and, and trying to get them healthy. Um, so what we did to a lot of these trees is that we either rooted them this year or we had them um, overwintered as small trees. And we took those very small trees and we rejuvenation pruned them. In fact, one I have here actually singled out. Um, and the reason I singled this tree out is very simply because it was getting shaded and it wasn't doing all that well, I noticed. So I brought it out here. This one's called uh, Grease Olivet. I've had this for a couple years now that I've rooted from cutting. And it just is not loving life. So what I did was I rejuvenation pruned it. Um, I actually took it back quite a bit. Um, at the beginning of this season, and you can see I made a cut right there and it put out its new growth and it's still really not that healthy. It's still really not doing all that well which to me means that we really need to get this, this new growth from below the soil, from a sucker, from the roots. So what I'm gonna have to do is because this really, this technique didn't succeed all that well, I'm gonna have to do this process again in the spring, um, this upcoming spring in 2021. So it's just not uh, a technique here, guys, that I think will work every single time but it is a technique that I think has huge benefits for um, getting our varieties established, healthy, and then because they're healthy, actually being representative of what the genetics of this variety should say this variety should do. And we talked about in that video how sometimes the process of rejuvenation pruning just doesn't work. You may end up, let's say, chopping your tree back and cutting it back really far, kind of like how I did on this tree, actually. I recently took it up out of the pot and turned it on its side to help, to hope that uh, some light or a little bit of maybe, um, you know, excavating some of the soil will actually help this tree put out a, a sucker or a bud somewhere above the, uh, above the soil. You know, and that's part of the rejuvenation pruning is that you cut a very unhealthy tree back to healthy growth. And in a lot of cases, what I like to recommend to get very healthy growth is to cut it really far back. And normally though, you're doing this process on more mature trees. So the, you know, the fact that we did this on young trees and we, we have been doing this on young trees means that it's just not always going to work out, unfortunately. This tree over here, in the sense that it didn't work out, but it didn't die. You know, sometimes you cut these trees back to try to make them healthy and then they end up dying. Kind of like this example here, this Colonel Littman's Black Cross that I have in a container. It's not dead necessarily, but it, you know, if it continues like this, the way it is, and it's not putting out any uh, new growth, you know, maybe this time next year, it will be dead. Or maybe at the end of the season. This particular tree, why this is so special is that we did rejuvenation pern this last year. This is our Grease Olivet tree. It's a French fig that I've had for a few years actually. And it just was never healthy. It just was never a tree that uh, put out some nice healthy growth that then grew well and then also was able to fruit. If it's not healthy, it's just not gonna fruit. Or at least it has to shake off the virus, the fig mosaic virus before it will actually fruit. And I have many examples of that. We'll kind of go through and show you some of that on some of my trees. But the point is, is that this tree didn't rejuvenation prune well. In fact, the growth that it did send up from the base last year after we rejuvenation pruned it was very unhealthy. So unsuccessful in a different way. It didn't die. It did put up growth, but the growth wasn't healthy. This year we tried it again. And we finally got some nice new growth down here at the base that uh, is really thick, healthy. This is very promising tree. We actually even pinched it. Um, I even took off a little bit of the tip here and we're gonna try to, we're rooting it actually currently. And then 
it's actually forming figs here uh, in July, which is kind of at the end, which is not really ideal, but it goes to show you that a very, very unhealthy tree can be made healthy if you do this rejuvenation pruning. Um, and it just, yeah, it just goes to show that this, your trees are not total lost causes. This one down here, we've did some rejuvenation pruning on as well. And you can see that the growth is relatively unhealthy. You know, there's still a lot of that fig mosaic virus, but it's growing. And that's what's kind of important. What I probably will do at the end of, not this season, but maybe at the beginning of next season is I will, actually probably at the end of this season, I will rejuvenation prune this again to try to make it look like this next year. This tree here is, um, <clears throat> this is Barna Soat. So this is actually, actually a friend of mine sent me this variety. So this is historically also a very unhealthy fig. Uh, there are just some varieties from UC Davis like Barna. So like Grease Olivet, I, I imagine. Like, you know, um, Ishia Black UC Davis, like Black Madeira UC Davis that just are not very healthy trees uh, because they have so much of the virus within them. And it just uh, is a bit of a shame. Oh, I will show you, by the way, a very good example of the fig mosaic virus and how it affects these trees until the growth gets healthy. So here's a, this is a Ishia Black UC Davis grafted onto Black Beauty 10. Black Beauty 10 is a very good rootstock, quite vigorous. And um, you can tell that as the tree sort of got its act together in the season, it didn't have his act together and actually the growth was very weak, very horrible branching um, on these trees. And then finally it gets to a point where the growth starts to become reasonable, more reasonable, less of that virus, again, more or less of that virus. And then as it finally gets the photosynthesis it needs, that branches become a bit healthier, it's now fruiting. So it really just goes to show you, and it's like that on the other side too, is that, again, unhealthy growth, unhealthy growth, unhealthy. We're getting more and more reasonable. The tree's starting to get its act together. Finally, the tree has somewhat of its act together with this leaf, and then it, you can see the fruit buds in here are fruiting, especially up here at the top. It's really going nuts, and the growth looks way, way better. This is also why if you have a really unhealthy tree, a good idea is to put it in the ground. They're going to rejuvenate and look very healthy much more naturally than if they were in a container over time. You can do it in a container, but, but your better bet, honestly, is to put them right in the ground. Um, I have an Ishia Black over there, which we'll look at in a minute. I think I do want to show you that tree. This is, by the way, my Ishia Black UC Davis that you can tell is extremely healthy. By putting it in the ground, cutting it back to six to 12 inches every year, it puts out such vigorous, healthy growth. Every single tree of here does that. You know, they just become so healthy. It's such a great way to grow figs and really to sell cuttings, I think, from these extremely healthy trees. It just, to me, makes a lot more sense.